To those of you watching by DVD, we welcome you here in the classroom along with the students who are present. We are going through a study of spiritual gifts and we're in session 14. This one will be talking about equality within unity. In the previous session, I talked about interdependence within unity. And we talked about the fact that all of us have a place within the body of Christ. And there's no need to be envy, envious of other people. There's no need to be prideful of the position we have. That only creates disunity. Instead, we should remember that God knows exactly where we should be. And he places us exactly where he wants us to be. We then talked about the field of activity, the field that God has assigned to you to work, and that you should not work another person's field. Just work your own. We notice that God enlarges the field at times. At other times, God keeps the field constant. And as a result, we should just listen to the Holy Spirit seek to enlarge our ministry, but be sensitive to the fact that the scope of our ministry is really a God thing. It's not our thing. Would you open up your Bibles along with me back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We are continuing on this time with the remainder of the chapter, verses 21 down to verse 30. I did not witness this story personally, but a friend of mine whom I have confidence in told me about a very interesting situation that took place in a church. People came into their churches normally, they sat down, and as you know, people tend to sit in the same place with the same people, the people that they know. And before the service started, a stranger came into the church. Only this wasn't just anybody. This was a homeless man, and he looked like a homeless man, and he smelled like a homeless man, because he was. And he wore a jacket that was tattered. He had dirt on his face. He had dirt under his fingernails. He was not the typical person who came to that church. And he moved towards the front, and he sat down, and everybody moved away from him. And the service began. And the homeless man participated. No one talked to him. No one helped him find his place in the hymnal. No one said, could you share the Bible with me? Because the man did not have one. And then it became time for the message. And the assistant pastor came up to preach. And this homeless man stood up, walked out of the pew, got into the aisle, and started to walk up to the stage. And he stood right next to the assistant pastor, and he took off his coat, and he took off his makeup, and he removed his hat and his wig, and he was the pastor of the church. And of course, his message was, our church is an inclusive church. We need to include everybody in the church. That there is no such thing as someone who's better than another. There may be someone who is in a more unfortunate situation than another. But those of us who have the resources are called by the gospel to show compassion to those who do not have the resources. That pastor made a dramatic point to his congregation, one that I'm sure they will never forget, that they should welcome the stranger, that they should make them be a part of things, and they should treat the person equal and with respect. Well, that's the basic message of this passage uh, that we're going to go through today. 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 21 down to 26. Previously I had said 31. We're going to go down to 26. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. That was the transition to the new part. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, 
those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Well, in this section, he presents four different groups of people in the church. He talks about those who are weaker, and he says that they are indispensable. Well, we remember that the body of Christ is related uh, and illustrated by the human body. Well, let's say the big toe is the weaker part. I mean, I can do a lot more strength with my hand than I can with my big toe. But the big toe is indispensable. Do you know what happens if you don't have one of your big toes? You have no balance. You cannot maintain your balance. You'll fall over. It's indispensable, yet it seems like such an insignificant part of our body compared to our hand and our fist. But it's not. It's indispensable. So he says, that one should be treated with great honor, even though it seems weaker. The second group in our body, he says, are less honorable. We view them as being less honorable, and we should treat them with special honor. Well, for me personally, the less honorable part would be my hair. It's gone. And in fact, for women, often the hair is the crowning beauty of the woman. And as such in scripture is given special significance. Well, I'm not particularly happy that I'm bald, but that's just the way it goes. That's how God made me. And so I decided to embrace my baldness and shave it all off. That's how God made me. And so, although it seems less honorable for me to have no hair, I mean, let's face it, there's not many guys who shave their entire head. In fact, you should give me special honor which I'm going to expect from you, special honor. And then he says there's unpresentable parts in the body, and they are given special modesty. On our bodies, for men, it would be the area around the groin. We make sure that that's covered. For women, it's not only that area, but the upper body as well. We make sure that those parts remain private because they're unpresentable. We wish to remain modest. And so we treat those parts with special modesty. And Paul says throughout this uh, section that we just read that all of those should be given special treatment. So when we think of our church and we think of those who are less well off, they should be treated with special honor and respect. When we think of those people who come to our church and they are disabled physically, they're in a wheelchair, or they're mentally challenged, and they don't really have the ability to think like we do, treat them with special honor. Someone who comes to our church and it's all a white church, and a black man walks in, treat them with special honor. So Paul says, Whatever your situation, you are due special honor, special treatment. We are all equal in the body of Christ. And when we don't treat our brothers and sisters with this principle of equality, then there's a split in the church. How do the people feel who are in those less desirable situations? They don't feel included. They don't feel like people care about them or like them. They feel different. 
And we want to make those people feel very much a part of our congregation, recognizing that we ourselves have our own limitations. I mentioned my limitation of my hair. It's something people notice right away. And some people go, I like it. And some people go, jeez, what was that guy thinking? So treat people with equality. So when we go back to what Paul has written, and we make sure we understand exactly what he has said. Go to verse 24, the first full sentence, and he says, But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it. And in what he is saying is that so that there be no division, all parts should be treated equal. No gift is more important than any other gift. All gifts are equally important. All people are equally important in the body of Christ and should be treated as such because we are one. We are one. He's combined all these very diverse people and made them united. Despite their diversity, they have to work together in, uh, in interconnectedness and treat each other with equality in order for the body to function effectively. And then finally, we go down to verse 26, where Paul makes it clear, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. You know, when I was scheduled to come to teach, I fell down some stairs and I hurt my knee badly. And I was not <clears throat> able to go. And I received so many emails from those of you who I had not met yet, expressing your sympathy that I could not come, your sorrow that it would be delayed, your hope that I would come again. You suffered with me, and your encouragement allowed me several months later to come and actually teach. The body of Christ working together. One part suffers, everyone suffers. One part honored, we all rejoice. I have been told often that I have a nice smile. Now, I don't know if that's true because I can't see myself. But people have told me that. And they tell me it makes them feel happy when they're around me and they see that smile. They see my smile because I'm happy. And because I rejoice, they rejoice. So in the body of Christ, what affects one person affects us all, whether it's the good, whether it's the bad, or whether it's the ugly. It affects the body. And we all need to remember that because we're part of the body, we are a family. And we should support one another as members of the family that's called the body of Christ. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com. Well, there are two groups of gifts. And I wanted to talk about these groups of gifts because they all need to be treated equally and they all need to be treated with respect and dignity and all be given their rightful place in the body of Christ. There are some gifts that we call the upfront gifts. And those gifts, people actually see in action. You see me teaching. It's an upfront gift. It gets noticed and often is affirmed by the body. There are many times, even here, that I've had people go, nice job. I get affirmed. People tell me, yeah, thanks, good. Those people who didn't think it were good, was good, they don't talk to me. But the other people say, good. And often, the gifts involve speaking. They have involve words. So you're before people, they see you doing it, they tend to give you affirmation, and it usually involves words. Apostles, they start new churches. They start new ministries. How could you not see them do this? They're in front, rallying the troops. Let's start a new church. 
evangelism. Of course, you see them, they're out there spreading the gospel. They're using words, interpretation. In some churches, these are the people who stand up and they interpret the message that someone is giving in tongues. Well, you see them, they're in front of the body. And then leaders, well, of course, they're in front and often get a lot of criticism and very little affirmation because leadership is hard. But you do see them and I suppose secretly you appreciate what they're doing for everyone and should tell them so. Miracles, how could a miracle not be public? You would see it. Prophecy, people who give a message, they stand up and they tell people, God's given me a message for you. Uh, and here's one of encouragement, here's one of warning, here's one about what's gonna happen in the future. Very public. Shepherding, pastor is a shepherd. We call him Pastor Shepherd, and we see him. The shepherds are typically small group members. We see them at work. And then finally, teachers, as I mentioned before. Now, you may have different gifts that you would put in here. This is not biblical. I just put them in categories that seem to make sense to me. So we have the upfront gifts. But then we have the behind the scenes gifts. And all of you will have one or the other. Some of you will have upfront gifts. Some of you will have behind the scenes gifts. Each of you should be treated equally, but often are not. Behind the scenes gift, administration, making plans, to ensure that a project gets completed. Encouragement, coming alongside an individual, walking with them, encouraging them to stay true to the gospel, letting them know that I care about you. Yeah, they're using words, but they're by themselves with an individual. Giving, these are people who prefer to remain secret. Remember Jesus said that when you give, do it privately, not like the Pharisees did, but like the woman who gave her might and did it all by herself without any fanfare, without any notice. Healing. And here I'm talking about healing socially and emotionally and relationally. This often takes place in a counselor's office where you sit down with an individual and you talk through the problems. And that person using their gift of healing helps the individual um, regain their health and become whole again. The gift of helps. Yeah, we see them setting up chairs, but often we don't even notice them. We just go on talking to people and they're busy setting up things. Hospitality, people in their homes. We don't even notice that they have created an environment that allows us to talk about Jesus. They do it privately and it's just there. Mercy, people often go to the hospital when someone is sick and visit them. Nobody knows about it, they do it privately, they encourage them. Someone dies, they're the first one on the phone to say, I am so sorry, is there anything I can do? Please let me help you. These are the behind the scenes gifts and for these gifts, these gifts are not noticed by the body often, and they tend to involve service, where you're serving other people in a direct and personal way that other people don't see, and often it is not affirmed. Oh yeah, the person might say thank you, but the body itself is largely unaware that anything was even done. And then finally, there's a group of gifts that I call the support gifts. And that's for a very important reason. They don't stand alone as a gift. There is no such place in the church if you have the gift of wisdom that you can be the wise man, the wise woman. There is no place in the church where you can say, all right, I want to be in a ministry where I show faith. These do not stand by themselves. Instead, they attach themselves to one of these other gifts and they create the term that you may have heard before, a gift mix, a combination of gifts. I'll give you several examples. 
My primary gift is teaching, but my support gift is knowledge. Now, doesn't it make sense that God in his wisdom would give a teacher the gift of knowledge? Makes sense to me, so I have a gift combination that makes a lot of sense. If your gift was uh, administration, you very well may have the gift of knowledge or wisdom. Uh, if you were the gift of giving, you very well might have the gift of faith. Because in faith, you give money to others knowing you're blessing them and believing that God is going to bless you in return. If you're the leader, it probably would be very good for you to have the gift of discernment so that you could tell whether a person is being true to the gospel, whether they're false or true, right or wrong, evil or good. In my church, to be an elder of the church, you must have the gift of discernment because the elders are the over shepherds of under shepherds of the body of Christ they are to protect the body that's what discernment does it protects the body so as we go through this consider do you have an upfront gift do you have a behind the scenes gift and is it possible that you have a support gift. Not everyone does. But this takes a while to be able to discern because you have to serve. And over a period of time, you begin to understand what your giftedness is. Now I have a word for every one of you out there who has an upfront gift. And everyone in here who has an upfront gift, stop treating people with behind-the-scenes gift like they are second-class Christians. Like their work is insignificant. Like they're not important. It's only the people who are up front that are really the key to the church. And those of you who have that gift, you know it's true. You know that there's a certain pride that we can have when we look at how much we affect the church and how little those other people affect the church. And those of you with the behind the scenes gift, you know that it's true. You know that those people with the upfront gifts often unconsciously and in a very uh, unobservable way make you feel like what you do is not important. What you do is vitally important. If you don't set up the meeting the right way and create the atmosphere, a teacher cannot teach and bring the gospel to people. If you have the gift of mercy and people never see that, how can we not expect you to be blessed because you brought compassion to someone else? You are just as important. And yet those of us with the upfront gifts bringing our carnal, selfish uh, nature to bear, like to present ourselves as though we're more important. And I have two words for you. Stop it. Be sure that you honor and respect everyone in the body of Christ. And those of you who have the behind the gifts, I have some words for you. You're important. What you do matters. We are the body of Christ. We are one unit with many members, all members being equal, all members being interdependent, all members being different, and maintaining the unity of the body of Christ. Now, I have been very direct with everyone here, and I feel at times that's the role of a teacher. I. I feel ashamed at those of us who have the, the upfront gifts that we don't give the honor and special uh, treatment to those who are working behind the scenes. And I feel a sense of compassion for those of you who work very hard and never get any credit. It should not be this way. And so for the sake of the church and following the same love that God showed us. Let us love one another regardless of what our gifts may be. 
In the next session, we're going to go over the final principle of uh, this whole idea of the body of Christ, and that's the pr principle of uniqueness within unity. And please join us for that next session.